All right, welcome back. We continue live right here at Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani, Tim Benz with you tonight at 412-575-2600. Make sure you join us tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. Tim will be alongside as well as Ron Cook of the Post-Gazette and Jeff Hathorne, also of the PG. And we have uh, Derek Aker on Twitter wants to know uh, why trade Phil Kessel? Trade Phil Kessel because, uh, yeah, he's still a point per game, but as General Manager Jim Rutherford said, change has to happen, and I think he's an easy place to start at $6.8 million. Uh, when he's not scoring, he's not impacting the game at all. I think Latang and Malkin, when they're right, they impact the game in other places if they aren't scoring more than Kessel does. Uh, the Phil is bad at defense thing was a bit overrated in his first few years. It was not this year. If you look at the high danger scoring chances on the ice when he was on the ice, some of the shorthanded goals against were a result of Phil not doing what he's supposed to do in the power play, which is snapshots off from the far wall. So uh, I think a time for a trade is right, but I did not like this trade idea, Bob. I don't know what you thought about the rumored uh, trade proposal to the Minnesota Wild. I wasn't on board. I felt like it was they were using Kessel to trade Jack Johnson's contract. And if you do something as seismic as trade Phil Kessel, you want something substantive in return, even if that substance is just picks and lots of cap space. You don't use Kessel as a way to grease out Jack Johnson, especially if you're taking back Victor Rask in exchange. And I, I, don't, don't, I don't mind Zucker so much. Rask, and I Rask, You know, Zucker's, Zucker's okay. okay. He's okay, but, but like this is a down year for him. Right. You know, he's a minus. He used to plus be a he plus 34. He was a minus nine. He's a $5.5 million player. His goals and points all dipped, so this was not a great year for him. I do think he'll be traded at some point, but he has veto power on some of this, and he may not want to go where they want him to go, and you wonder what they're going to do at that point because clearly it's come to some sort of an end here, even though I think Phil Kessel – is one of these guys who does well if he gets a line that he's not a superstar. If I'm not mistaken, he played with Tyler Bozak in, in Toronto. And, I mean, that was fine. Then he comes here with the HBK line, and that's where he had his biggest success. Let's go to Pete in Squirrel Hill. What's up, Pete? How you doing? Hey, hey guys. How are you? Tonight, Good. Bob? Thanks. Good. Real quick, Maryland 12-10 over B.C. Women today, their fourth title in six years. There you go. There Thanks for that. The men's, the men's uh, lacrosse tournament, most underrated event in sports every Memorial Day. It's, it's, a, it's tremendous. They know the greatest lacrosse player in the history of the sport was the incomparable Jim Brown. They changed the rules because of him. So what I'm calling about, Bob, is a quick shout-out to the great Bart Starr. Okay, in the 86-year history of the NFL, the only team ever to three-peat was his 60s Ed Packers. He won five titles in seven years. And that team put more players in the Hall of Fame than any other. Wait a minute, did he, did he pass away? Is that what I'm yes. Because I did not see this. When did yeah. this happen? Today. This morning, right? Yeah, it was this morning. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been immersed in pirate stuff. I did not see that. You know, I, agree with, I agree with that, by the way. Uh, all I those, know he's a, my wife loved Bart Starr. Yeah, all the great smart. quarterbacks of the 70s have been pretty lucky from the 60s through to the 70s. Uh, for all the deaths that have happened from football players who have gone way too soon, a lot of those – Hall of Fame superstar quarterbacks that made the Super Bowl era into what they are. Luckily, have been with us for a long time, and uh, unfortunately, Bart Starr did pass away today. But um, yeah, I mean, he's go back and watch some of those NFL films specials, oh. right? And he, he helped make One it. One of the best ever. Yeah. Brad and Duncansville joins us right now on the Sports Call. Hey, Brad. Hi, Bob. Hi, Tim. Hi. What's going on? Um, nothing. Um, I have a uh, hard set for you and a and a penguin question for you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I have Archer's ERA is 575 now. You guys knew that or not? Yes. Okay, and my penguin question is, if the Penguins do trade Phil Kessel, what would they get in return, and would it be a good player in return? Well, yeah, they want to get something in return, some younger guy, and, and Zucker fits that. Rask necessarily doesn't. But No. And the other thing about Rask is, you know, I understand it's one bad contract for another bad contract, but – Sometimes you have to overpay for a fifth or sixth defenseman. Sometimes you have to overpay for Jack Johnson. You do not have to overpay for a fourth line forward. No. You got Bluger. You got Adam Johnson. You got guys like Dominic Simones and Zach Aston Reese's. You don't need to overpay. We're due for a break. We'll take it right now. Come back right after this on Pittsburgh CW.